The Book of Acts gives us the model for reaching the ends of the earth. So I'm in Burma right now. The island of Bali is absolutely spectacular. We are in Cambodia here. This is a beautiful family that lives in a village that we've done distributions with. In the Great Commission, let's remember, Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. And for us at World Mission, it's really important that the Word of God be a part of that. I mean, how can you really become a disciple if you don't have access to the Word of God? We are in Kor, the middle of Rendili land, and all these brothers are Rendili pastors. So are you guys happy about these units? Yes. yes. All right. Cambodia is a, an amazing country. It's surrounded by Laos, Vietnam, and Thailand. And the 16 million people that live here, they say about 85% are Buddhists, and many of them have never heard the gospel for the first time. Hello and welcome. This is the Great Commission Update. I'm Rusty Humphreys. He is Greg Kelly. And boy, we sure appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Um, a lot going on. We're getting ready for our big trip. Uh, so, Greg, what's uh, what's been going on at World Mission? Anything exciting happening? Anything. There's always exciting things going on, Rusty. You know, because of where we work, which we call in the mission world, the 1040 window, there's always uh, crazy stories that are coming in, uh, per stories of persecution. Um, we actually, the, the most recent story actually was we need to evacuate one of our leaders in uh, who works with the Somali people group because his life is in danger. So that's something that happened just two days ago. And so we need to, we get those kind of requests that we have to creatively figure out how do you balance that that delicate balance between doing ministry in hard places keep and keep people safe because if they're not safe then you know they're not going to get ministry done so there's just a delicate balance between that that we're always uh, sort of balancing at world mission now we are going on a trip uh very soon and we're not going to um i mean there's some dangerous places on this trip aren't there i mean well, you know, anytime you're going into an area that's majority Muslim, um, and and not even just Muslim, Rusty. I mean, it's Hindu majority areas, Buddhist majority areas. There's persecution everywhere. Um, but in the case uh, uh, for us, in about a month, we'll be going to Bangladesh, which is a, a majority Muslim country. And so, uh, when you've got that high concentration of Islam, and you're talking about, you know, in the high, nearly ninety percent. The, the demographics in Bangladesh are 90% Muslim and about 10% Hindu. That doesn't leave much room for anything else going on, um, but uh, we'll be safe. Now, um, I don't know much about Bangladesh. When we you say we're going to Bangladesh, are we going like to the city? Are we going to the outskirts? What 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 are you expecting here? Dhaka is the capital, and in in, in Bangladesh, there's about 162 million people. It's the it's one of the most densely concentrated um, from a population standpoint country in the world. So you've got a hundred, just to put that in perspective, all right, Bangladesh is about the size of Michigan, where I'm from. Uh, in Michigan, there's 10 million people. In Bangladesh, there's 162 million people. I'll put it in another perspective. There's about 300 million people in America. So you're telling me it's half the population of America in the size of Michigan. Exactly. Exactly. Man. I mean, there's yeah. not only that, but then on top of that, it's considered the rickshaw capital of the world. So you've got 600,000 rickshaws also going around. So it's it's a very interesting uh, country. It's very low. The, the reason that there's so many people there is it's incredibly fertile land. You've got the Ganges River that's coming down through there, and it, and it brings all kinds of nutrients in there, and it just sort of drops it into what would be you know considered like Delta region, very low elevation, uh, sea level, but that also makes it very prone to cyclones. So when cyclones come through the Bay of Bengal, um, it just causes havoc because uh, the uh, the people live at so low, basically sea level areas, so so much of the population, uh, and so there's devastation when you know bad storms come up through there. Can but can you show us on the map there, Bangladesh? Where are we talking about going on this trip? So this is the Bay of Bengal right here just to the east of India, and straight up to the north is Bangladesh. And so you just a straight shot. Just it's, it's only bordered by India and Myanmar, or on this map it says Burma. It used to be Burma, now it's Myanmar. So it's bordered by those two countries. Uh, very low elevation. But what's really interesting is that 
its heritage in 19, I think it was 1971, it declared independence from Pakistan. So that's why the, the interesting dynamics in that part of the world, Rusty, which is really when you talk about unreached people groups where world mission works, it's almost this whole area of the world is like ground zero, the highest concentration of unreached of anywhere in the world. Uh, but yet the dynamics religiously are very fascinating because India, of course, is a majority Hindu country, right. um, Hindus living there than any place in the world. And then you've got bordering to the east, Myanmar, which I mentioned, which is a majority Buddhist country. And then you've got the heritage of Bangladesh from Pakistan, which is a majority Muslim country. Right. So you've got all these dynamics of religion and ethnicity coming together uh, into Bangladesh, um, which which makes it a very critical strategic place from a standpoint of unreached people groups. Okay. You you what was the name of that sea there? The Bengal Sea. Yeah, Bay of Bengal. Bay of Bengal. Now the only Bengal I've ever heard of. Now that you say that is I think Bengal t- tigers. Are we going to see like Bengal tires, tigers running around? And are we like going to be lunch? I can't tell you everything, Rusty. I have to keep some secrets. You know, you're asking oh, yeah. for, we're going to be I just have to refrain from all the fun little things. Otherwise you won't be surprised. Uh, we're running from tigers. I would tell you, okay, we won't, you, we're not going to be running from tigers. We'll be in one of those rickshaws. You're going to be totally safe. Okay. They, they are very secure. Hey, you know, when I mentioned unreached people groups, this is also something interesting event about Bangladesh. So there's out of the 17,000 people groups in the world today, they say about 7,000 are still considered unreached, which again, that's where we're working. The very largest unreached people group in the world in Bangladesh. Really? The largest, yeah. It's They're called the Sheikh, S-H-A-I-K-H. Uh, 133 million people all Muslim, uh, when it comes to the question of how many of you are Christian, it's 0.00%, 133 million people, and and there's basically no Christians there. Now, uh, when so you say that, sheikhs, are those the guys that don't ever cut their hair and they have got the turbans and stuff? A little bit of everything, but okay. they're... they're no, no. That, that's not that. That's the, that's the uh, that's the ethnicity of these people. So it's okay. literally a single people group, though. I mean, and it's the largest in the world in, in Bangladesh. So you're you know, you're going to meet some interesting people. You're going to see some really uh, interesting things. A massive uh, Muslim culture there called the prayer is going to be very uh, everywhere we go. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the other place we're going because we talk about Dhaka. That's the capital of Bangladesh. But actually, we're going to spend our time not in Dhaka, but we're going to be over into a place called Cox's Bazaar, which sounds kind of like sounds like op- a movie. It's they, they may <laughs> one day make a movie out of Cox's Bazaar. And the reason is that they have the largest refugee camp in the world uh, filled with Rohingyas. Right. So this is this is now where the whole dynamic of Myanmar and Bangladesh come into play, because the Rohingyas are that that people group that on, in our lifetime, it's probably one of the greatest expressions of genocide. Mm-hmm. Uh, it happened. It's happened in the last three years. So and ba- we're, basically the, n- none of their neighbors like them and nobody wants them. And they're nope. kind of are they like in, in like a big fenced in area? They can't get out kind of thing. Oh. The Cox's Bazaar is actually the name of the area where they're at. And so there, there's there's kind of multiple refugee camps sort of staggered um, on top of one another. It's in an area that really, you know, nobody is. It's not like, a, you know, an area uh, where people are drawn to. It's not a Clearwater Beach or a, you know, a, 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 just a nice area that people are drawn to. It's, it's a place that... Uh, was empty for a reason. And so they take these million people uh, called Rohingya and they put them into this area. So Burma doesn't want them back. Bangladesh really doesn't want them there. Uh, but because they're primarily Muslim, um, you know, it's a tremendous opportunity for the missions community. The, the, the church needs to recognize these kind of situations, Rusty, and respond. It's messy. It's sloppy. It's, it's not, it doesn't fit cleanly inside of a box. But in my opinion, it's probably an unprecedented opportunity in the body of Christ today. That's why we're going there. It's going to be really fun. All right, let's take a look at some of these pictures and uh, see what some of the stuff that you're talking about here. Yeah. Uh, first thing we've got is uh, um, a truck, and they've got like white bags in the truck. It looks like they're unloading something. Yeah. So that is our, you know, one of our strategies when we're talking about refugees, this is among the Rohingyas. So we have a team of people there that are just loving these people. They're bringing in food. 
Uh, they're bringing in basic survival resources, food, shelter, clothing, uh, and that is uh, some of our emergency aid relief going in there. So just, and the people just come around, you know, they don't ask you, hey, are you a Christian? Are you a Buddhist? Or, that, that's not, it doesn't even, that's not even on the radar. They're looking at our team and we want our team, just, just love on these people. Just let them know you care, uh, you know, because they, they are creations of God and they deserve, um, you know, security and, and, you know, the basic necessities of life and survival. They deserve that. And when you do that, you know, these moms and dads uh, and the kids, they're like, why are you doing that? Now, all of a sudden, there's, it creates this opportunity uh, just to, to speak the gospel into them and encourage them do some to Christ, and that's what's going on there. Nice. All right, you were talking about rickshaws. This is a, a guy on kind of a, a motorcycle with a seat in the back and another motorcycle behind him. Is that one of the rickshaws you were talking that's, about? That's one of the 600,000 rickshaws in Bangladesh. So that's what you are going to be right. That's what Rusty Humphreys is going to be riding on. And if he's good, we might even let him drive one. But oh, that, now that would be cool. Wouldn't that be cool? I would drive one of those. Now, they probably won't, don't let you do that, do they? Well, I think we can make a special arrangement for you. Well, that would be fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm all in. I'm all, right. all in. All right, all right. let's all right. take a look here. And we've got a very interesting shot of, uh, looks like um, uh, there are people are sitting on the ground and there's people in the back. It's a very colorful uh, tent kind of thing. And somebody's holding up a, a, uh, a treasure. They have a treasure there. So that's one of the examples of our distribution. So it's really interesting, Rusty. I mean, again, here we're talking about an area that's 90% Muslim, and whoever's not a Muslim statistically is a Hindu. Uh, and and yet in that, that same environment where you're talking to them about the love of Jesus and telling them stories, people gather around. It's, it's really the power of the oral cultures. So they'll come around in a group like this and they'll listen. They'll hear stories. And then all of a sudden you pull out the treasure, right, which is solar powered and it's in their language. And they all start going, are you kidding me? That's playing my language. And then all of a sudden you get kind of a secondary crowd, which you can see a little bit of there in the background as, yeah. as they're curious and they're listening to it. And then these people will go and they'll share uh, with their friends and family. So that's what's going on there. Very cool. Uh, we have, uh, looks like uh, uh, somebody getting baptized uh, in a, yeah. not a very clean stream, um, but uh, it's probably very, very important in their lives. Yeah, you know, we, we remind uh, our friends and, you know, those who are listening to the Great Commission Update and watching us uh, today, the, the baptism is not uh, an issue of salvation. It's identifying with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And, you know, in American culture, we kind of talk about it, and it's more of a, a kind of a check-the-box thing. Um, uh, again, it doesn't have to do with salvation, but in these kind of cultures, it is massively important because you can raise your hand and say, I'm a follower of Jesus. And the religious elite and the, you know, those who are controlling the Muslim leaders and the Hindu leaders, they pay much attention. But when you get water baptized, oh my gosh, that gets everybody's attention. That is like saying, I'm all in following Jesus. So those are big moments. Wow, that's awesome. A uh, group of kids uh, sitting on some stairs here, maybe some parents in the back. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, one of the really cool things uh, that we found from a strategy standpoint uh, is uh, sometimes the adults are a little more, you know, um, sort of, you know, cautious when it comes to, let me share with you, but the children, uh, they are so hungry. They are just like sponges. So a lot of our strategy in places like Bangladesh, um, where most of the, the the population, the average population is going to be like in their 20s, right? I mean, there's so many children just everywhere. And so parents really value the idea of education and even in English education and teaching their kids to read. And so when we come into communities and teach the children how to read, uh, we're using the Bible uh, to do that. And uh, a lot of times the children become the most powerful evangelists, which one of our photos actually shows that. Yeah, I mean, we've got here now a bunch of kids uh, holding up the treasure. Yeah, this, this was one of uh, my uh, uh, most encouraging and surprising moments ever in all my travels. Basically, the backstory to this is as we were in this village walking around, the leader said, hey, we want to take you to a treasure distribution. So, you know, you're walking through these villages and all this and that, and you get there and you hear all the kids singing. And all those kids were just sitting down, you know, singing when we arrived. And I kind of leaned over and I said, now, what's going on here? And they said, oh, brother, you know, these are the children. We're reaching out to them. And then they, they asked the kids a question. They said, who's received a treasure and is taking it home to their family? And that's what I saw next. 
wow. all these kids like reached in their little satchels and you know their pockets or whatever and they pulled out a treasure and the guy goes they're taking you home and every night they're sharing it with their muslim parents and their parents don't get angry when the kids bring something like that home again because they're adding value and they recognize just the love being expressed to their their children and they're so appreciative of it there's no conditions on that they just do that uh, because they're loving on these people and they they, they appreciate that and so they say well what they give you you say, well, this is a you know device, and it plays our language. And a lot of there's there's music on there, and of course, it's in their language, in the Bengali language. So the parents are listening to the word of God, and God's using these children as the missionaries, which is pretty cool. It's awesome. All right, one more shot here from uh, Bangladesh, and this is uh, some water, uh, some fields, or something. What are we seeing here? Well, this this goes to show just the the fertile nature of Bangladesh in the Delta area. And so you've got lots of irrigation going on. Uh, it's incredibly rich and, and prosperous from a, uh, a standpoint of, of growing crops and vegetables. So this this kind of gives you, but it also shows you how low to sea level uh, the area is. So when a storm comes up through the Bay of Bengal, and normally every season there's something that's coming through there, Rusty. That quite honestly, that was one of the reasons Pakistan shed Bangladesh because when there'd be a natural disaster, it would be so devastating that uh, you know they didn't have the resources to really help help the people. So they're like, hey, how about if you guys become your own country? Get uh, out. We don't need you. We don't want you. Yeah. That, that, that factored into it all. Okay, so um, how do we get there? Is it just a nice little leisurely first-class flight? We get there, they, you know, we have a little bed on the plane, they give us cookies and massages, and then we just stroll right on in and it's, then um, start working. Wow, that, that was a perfect description. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it's not going to be anything like that. Oh, we'll get there comfortably, Rusty. Come yeah. Right. No, in a Russian cargo plane. Uh, so we'll, we'll get there comfortably. And uh, we'll get to Dhaka, and we'll spend a day there. And then we are going to quickly get in a little commuter, and we're going to head over to Cox's Bazaar and spend some time with the Rohingyas over there. And we'll be able to report back. When you and I are there, the awesome thing is we're going to be able to bring the Great Commission Update family with us. And we'll be we'll be recording some stories. We'll be doing some video. Yeah, we're going to um, do the show live from there. And when I, well, we're going to record it live. There's no way for us to get it out live, um, but we're going to record it and and get it out for you. And and also we're going to be having, uh, you know, I'll bring I'm bringing all my equipment. I don't know how I'm going to have any room for clothes or a sleeping bag, but I'm going to have all the equipment, so drones and other things, so you can really get a yeah. great feel and look of what it's like there. Yeah, and we'll interview some of the people there too. So you'll be meeting some of the people who are working in the refugee camp. You'll you'll meet some refugees, some Rohingyas. You know, we've been talking a lot about the Rohingyas on the Great Commission update because we want to educate you. It's important that you know, as a follower of Jesus, who's the greatest, largest, uh, genocidal targeted people group that are in refugee camps now. It's important that you know that kind of information. So we're gonna we're gonna literally interview to them in a very personal way. It's it's really going to be fun for us to be there. Well, and uh, I've got a, a friend of mine has donated some money to uh, get some treasures over there, and we're going to be thanking him while we're there. And hopefully uh, you would donate some money as well and help us. Uh, it costs $40 to get a treasure over there. Uh, my friend was like, $40 for this little thing? How, how, why is it so, exp so expensive? Well, I don't think it's just $40 for the the treasure, although it's quite technologically advanced, but it also is part of the, the transportation cost too, right, Greg? Or is it what yeah. else? Is it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so what you've got on there is obviously the little, you know, the solar power. This is thing is going to last for over three years. And what we hear regularly, Rusty, is that they're listening to the treasure on average from two to five hours every single day. But it's not just a one-to-one -one ratio. So many times when we think about a Bible, you know, we're conditioned in the U.S. to think, you know, Rusty's got his Bible, I've got mine, um, and we've more, got more than one, um, and, and so do you. Uh, everyone watching this does. Um, but what happens with a treasure is that oral culture kicks in. And so on average, a treasure is listened to by well over 100 people the course of the year. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty big impact for that 40 bucks. So that's you're awesome. 
Well, uh, so yeah, please, uh, if you would, so the best way is to go to worldmission.cc. And if you have a, not only if you'd like to donate, but if you have a business or you want uh, uh, us to acknowledge you, we'd love to do it. And uh, so we've got a couple people that have donated. Not enough. Uh, we certainly need your help because we, how many do you, are we planning to bring over there? What, 10, 15 treasures? And that's about well, it. Yeah, we're going to actually be taking around 300. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. And we'll also, I might add, uh, there's a couple of doctors that are going with us, Rusty. Uh, and so there'll be some medical things going on. And also we're taking in water filters. So it's not just the treasure that we're taking in, but these little uh, water filters. And then also, um, you know, some doctors actually doing, you know, caring for the people. I just met a guy. Oh, oh the doctors for the people. I thought it was going to make sure that I don't die walking those trails. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> that too, yeah. but... We'll use them with the refugees. Yeah, well. probably shouldn't let the refugees well, sure. get the doctors first. I'll we'll, we'll okay. let that happen. We're fine with that. All right. So uh, please, if you would uh, go and help uh, worldmission.cc. Greg, what would you? How would you like to wrap this one up? I just want to remind everyone uh, that you're going with us. Rusty and I will be there. We'll be in Bangladesh, and then after that, Nepal. Uh, but you're going with us. I mean, we we just really covet your prayers. Um, and if you can go to the website, worldmission.cc, send a treasure. We'd, be, we'd love to put one in the hands of a Muslim family. Think about that. They're going into the hands of people who have never had access to the gospel. And it's because of you uh, that we can make that happen. It's absolutely amazing. So please uh, go to worldmission.cc, worldmission.cc. On our next show, we're going to talk about the other stop on our trip, Nepal, right? Yes, sir. And that's where uh, that, that place is hard to get to. Right. That's that's hard to get to. It's very isolated because of the Himalayan mountains, whereas uh, Bangladesh is very low elevation. Nepal is very high elevation. So okay. we're going one extreme to the other. All right, we'll be talking about that next time. Again, worldmission.cc, we really appreciate you. Thank you so much. May God bless you, and may you please uh, bless the nice folks at World Mission so they can bless the rest of the world. Worldmission.cc. I'm Rusty Humphreys for Greg Kelly, and this is the Great Commission Update.